guys, it is Carl Brown from Guitar Lessons 365.com. I have a heavily requested for you guys today. We'll learn how to play Ice Cream Man by uh, Van Halen. So, this one's unique. It's got some David Lee Roth guitar parts in it. And a crazy tuning. A crazy E flat open tuning. And then good old Eddie comes in and, uh, and it just rips from there. So, we've got some, our work cut out for us. I'm going to take care of the acoustic parts first. And then just, I'm going to pick up the electric and go through all of Eddie's parts. Um, and note for note. So, it's... Uh, not going to be easy. So uh, before I do, please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ring that notification bell, of course, uh, so you know I'll release a new video lesson. And uh, check out my Guitar Academy too. You'll see the link in the description below. I'm offering a free seven-day trial right now. Um, it's, it contains all of my guitar courses, covering everything from uh, a complete beginner course to more advanced courses on technique and improvisation and ear training, uh, theory guitar tone, um, you name it. So there's a lot of cool stuff over there. Uh, we've got a really great community and we're available across all the apps. So you'd want to use the link below to sign up to get your free trial. But after that, you can also access the Academy on your favorite mobile app uh, or your favorite TV app like Roku and Apple TV and a bunch of others. So go check it out. It's, it's really cool. To, it's a little community we got going. So let's start here. Now, let me explain the tuning. So this is David Lee Roth playing this acoustic intro. And he's in E flat open tuning. So his chord is tuned to an E flat major chord. His chord is tuned, to, his guitar is tuned to an E flat major chord. So what is that? So let me start here. So the low E is down to an E flat. And then we have the next string is actually tuned up. The A string is tuned up to a B flat. And then the D string is tuned up to an E flat. Then the G string gets to stay the same, yay. So that stays the same. And then the B string tuned down to B flat. And the high E string tuned down to E flat. So all together that gives us an E flat major chord. Alright, so you'll probably see that played a little bit different way, but this is the way he actually does it, so I'm all about authenticity. So we're going to stick with this. So when we go to switch to electric, standard E flat tuning, not the open tuning. So normal, every string down a half step, no funny business when Eddie starts playing. So we have this first. So we're going to start it with this. So we got kind of a bass line going here. So the low E open, I'm still going to call this just E, A, D, G, B, E because I'm not smart enough to call it anything else. So we have E, and then, uh, so the open E string, four on the E, A, open, two on the A, three, two, open, two. So we have this. And repeat that. Now between each one of those hits, he has an open B string with your index finger. So we have this. All right, so now this section, after this that intro, we have this kind of verse section that he's singing over, and he goes to it four times, the chord progression four times. The first, second, and fourth time are the same. The third time, there's a variation there. So what we're going to be doing is, okay, so the first way you're going to play it, the main way, he's going to play it three times through. It's going to start like that. So the open E and the A string together. And then, and then the add the low E, I mean the second fret there on the A. So with this. And then you basically do that same thing, but string at the fifth fret. So you do the bar at the fifth, and then add the seventh on the A. So like this, and then. So what you'll find is whenever he's down here in the E, though, he's gonna do that. Oh, put that open B in there all the time. So like this. 
whenever he's down here doing it over E, you're going to add that open B in between each one. But then he takes it up to the A. And you don't hear it anymore, obviously. And then we're back to the E. Now, over the second time through the we're going to play a... So... So that's the open A, two, three, two, open A, two, open A, two. So that's the melody. So we still got the low E in there. But also the open B in between each one. So. So what I, the way I like to look at it is you really want to bring out that note, the bass line on the, uh, on the on the A string, so the open E is kind of an afterthought. So you don't have to hit it very hard, and then we're back to the A, and then back to the full bass line. So so far we have this. Then take it up to the instead of the A up to the seventh fret for the B, and then um, here at the uh, fifth fret again. All right, and then we're gonna um, go back down to the just the zero two zero two that we started with that on the low E. And then end it, just a bar at the uh, seventh fret creates a, a B major chord or B flat major in this key. This tuning's up. All right, so so far we have this. That's one time through. Then you do the exact same thing again the second time through. And at the end of the second one, when we do that, we now get to the third, and that's a little bit different. So we the vid. Basically, the first half of it, we play like this. We just hit the, the just the open strings, and then a couple more times, then one more time, and then a little bass line. That zero, two, three, four takes us up to the A, and then we pick back up in the rhythm where it would have where that A would have been, and we just continue with the rhythm uh, the same way that we t played before. Now, just now, we're at a different. We started at a different point. We do it one more time, or we do it one more time for the ladies, and that fourth time is the same that we did at the beginning, which is this. So, so the long version. So it's the same as the first and second time there was that fourth time. All right, and then we're gonna have the band kick in now. So I'm gonna grab my electric and I'll start playing through um, Eddie's parts. So it sounds like this. <laughs>
All right, so that kind of leads us into the solo there. So we're going to start kind of with a slide here. Remember, just to remind you here, we're in E flat tuning now, not open E flat. So just a standard E flat tuning with just every string down a, a half step there. All right, so we had this kind of slide down and hit the E power chord. And then a couple times. Then one more time. And then we start that kind of line that we did in the acoustic part. Just zero, two, three, four. And then we get to the kind of the that kind of blues progression that the way that's being played on the uh, but A's playing on electric, so it looks like this. All right, so uh, since we're kind of building in halfway through it, kind of start on the A, so the A power chord, and so we had the open A string, and that second fret there on the D, and it kind of rotates between two and four on the D with that open A continuum. All right. Then you basically move it back down to E by just moving everything up one string. So the open low E with two and four rotating back and forth on the A. So. All right, from there, we're gonna grab this B, uh, do it off of a B. So we have second fret there on the A, fourth fret there on the D, and you're gonna have a stretch. You're gonna have to rotate between the notes between four and six here on the D. And down to the A, same as we did before. And then back down to the E. And then to end the first time through, Hit on the on the B, so we hit that B power chord a couple times, then the six. So all together for the coming in from the intro after the acoustic part. So a little last hit. And then we start kind of the standard version of the riff, which starts on the E. But um, he do some higher voicings here after this. So after that, we have this. All right, so that's gonna be um, starting on that, that kind of the low E first. That same little right here we got going there, and then over on the A. But then instead of going back down the E, it actually sounds like a recording, like maybe the first one. And then he jumps up, but you can just go ahead and jump up to. Um, So that's going to be the 7th fret on the A, 9th um, fret there on the uh, D, and you can still get the low E in there as well. And then you're going to be playing between 9 and 11 on the D. So. And it goes back down to the A. Back to the E. Hear that blues progression, then take it to the B like we did before, and then the A, and then he has this little thing that he does leading into the solo. It looks like this. He does that a few times. That's sliding into the ninth fret there. You're gonna be sliding into an E major chord. And you on the kind of pick the D string, slide up to nine, and then bar there, and then pick across the B and the G. Then come back and pick the D again to go. And then do that at the 14th, which is an A major, and then a B. So it, 
and then resolve it there to the 12th fret there on the high E string. All right, and then that takes us to the solo. So I'm going to play through the solo real quick for you, and then I'll show you how to play it phrase by phrase. So here we go. So got some interesting stuff in there, some classic Eddie, um, early Eddie, late Eddie, everything Eddie in it. So some really, really cool stuff in there. Monster stretches as well, too. So um, let's take a look at it here. So this after this little opening, when it resolves there to that 12th fret there on the high E, then we start this pattern. So this is a big stretch here, and it's kind of difficult for me to grab because of the way I have to sit in front of these cameras. But um, we basically have, um, you're gonna wanna keep your uh, first finger at the 12th fret, and then play the 16th fret here with your ring finger, and then pinky at the uh, 19th fret. All right, so we gotta stretch from 12 to 19. So what we're doing first is we're gonna have, it's an eight note pattern. So at first, you're gonna start with the 16. You pick 16, hammer on 19, pull back off to 16, and then pull off to 12. So we have this. So after you have that, now you go back to 16, pull off 16 to 12, and then 14 to 12. And that's the second four, a group of four. So we have the first group of four, and then second group. So that's the eight note pattern that repeats pretty much verbatim like that except for one note on the B string. So we basically, when we get to the B string, he's doing one of these symmetrical licks where he takes this, he's taking that pattern and he's taking it across strings, which hurts. It doesn't feel good, but um, we're gonna do it anyway. So we have basically, so that first pattern, that eight note pattern, you're gonna do it four times on the high E string. Really cool sounding. Not your typical blues solo, let me tell you that. So then we go over to the B string and you pretty much do the same pattern, except, so you start it the same way. But when you do the pull-offs, the second group of four, it doesn't go 16, 14. It goes 16, 15. So he has got that 15 in there instead of 14. So we have this. So the, the top string is all the 14th fret there. And then when we get up, we just do the pattern once on the B. And it's instead of 16, 14, it's 16, 15. Pull, pulling off to 12 each one. So we have the... over to 16 and then when you get down to the G string so you just did that pattern once now you're back to the 12 14 16 19 so just once I'm sorry all right and then we go down to the D string and then so so just once there, and then we're going to end it by playing 16 on the A, and then resolve it to that 14 at the E on the, uh, at the uh, 14th fret there on the uh, D string. So we have this four times on top, then once on the B string with the 15th fret instead of the 14. And then once on the G string, back to the original fingerings that was that we did on the high E. 
And then the same on the D. And then when you get down to here at the A string, you hit that 16, but then just go back to that D. D string, so we this. Glad that's over with. Then we have this. All right, so that's gonna be, start with a bend there at the 15th fret there on the B. And then it's when you do this kind of, one of those little trills between 12 and 15 on the B. And then it's kind of sliding up the B string, you know, kind of with a tap kind of an eddy signature thing. And then over to the uh, 14th fret, between 14 and 12 seconds. Another signature eddy thing. So we have, so kind of start out with a bend and the bend and release of the 14th on the G. And then a lot of whammy bar. And he's kind of just doing a really slow trill there between 14 and 12. And then you let you pull it off of the open G, and then just do a little bar dive. So yeah. I'm sorry. All right. Now from there we have this. All right, so um, that's gonna start with some unison bends here at the 12th fret. So at the 12th fret on the high E, 15th on the B. So you're gonna bend up that 15, and then play 15, 16 on the um, on on the high E string, and then back to the unison bend. So we and then he comes down and does a quick little repeated blues lay. So that's going to start 12 on the high E, pull off 15 to 12 on the B string, then go over to 15 on the G, then back to that 15, I'm sorry, back to the 12 on the B. Let's wait this. Then you're going to want to pull off 15 to 14 on the G. All right, so that's kind of the first way through the lick, and then he repeats it again a few times a little differently. So we have this. After you did this... Now from here, we repeat it like this. So it's kind of a pull-off from 15 to 12 again, 15 on the G, back to that 12, and then the pull off 15 to 14 again. And then repeat exactly what we just did. So it's a six note lick. So coming out of... And then we get down to, after you've done that, you pull off the 12. And then you get, kind of bend up that 12 a little bit, then pull it off to the open G string. And you do a bar dive, and then you pick the low E and bring it up. So we have this. All right, now coming out of that, we have some kind of a tricky bends and tapping and kind of a bluesy thing. It's kind of erratic. So it sounds like this. So that's a bend at the 12th fret there on the G string. It's a step and a half bend. So you're gonna, you're gonna wanna sound like that. Note. And you're gonna wanna sound like that. And then, then you. So you wanna, when you bend up, you tap it at the 15 as well. So we have the, So it's kind of hard to explain what's going on there. You're doing, I'm doing a, a step and a half bend, 
then I'm tapping and I, I do a quick release of the bend and then back up to that step and a half bend and then I tap it again at the 15th fret and this time when I do a, a, a release it and bend it back up real quick I don't bend it up a uh, step and a half just a whole step so it's kind of like and you don't mute it like an idiot so like that. So that's what's going on in the left hand. So I'm doing that with a tap. So, so it's a little bit tricky to get, especially when you're just like just in the middle of nowhere. It's really tricky. Like that. Then you release the so, so after you release that half that whole step. You go 9, 11 on the G. And then kind of a little bend at 11, back to the 9. Then 11, 9 on the D and the A. And then kind of a really kind of a big vibrato um, slash bend uh, at the 10th fret there on the A train. All right, and then we get to the next section. It looks like this. All right, so that's kind of the last one. Kind of sounds kind of crazy. So we have now you can. I, I'm hybrid picking this a lot. I like to kind of pick notes that are kind of across strings, repeated like that with hybrid picking. I'm not sure. I think he's probably just picking it with down and upstrokes. Whatever feels comfortable for you. But you're sliding into the 16th fret there on on the um, the G string, and then playing the 16 on the high. End. Now he's also in these first opening ones. You can also hear the note on the B string in there. So we have the 16 on the G and the high E, but 15 on the B. So really what you're doing is trying to hit the G and the E again and again, but you're kind of, if you use a little bit wider stroke, you're gonna kind of hit that B string a little bit too. And you have that note kind of ringing there. It helps create that dissonant bluesy sound. And then slide into this one fret lower, do the same thing. And then back to where we were. And then we go back. Now here, you can drop the note on the B string and just, which is sliding into the 19th fret, and then 21, and then back down to the 19th fret with those two shapes. So. And then that crazy sound and thing. It sounds like to me, you can play this a couple different ways, but it's really, um, it's you're playing the 18th fret here on the B and the G together, and you're bending them up together while also pulling up on the bar. Kind of create that kind of dinosaur sound or whatever. Elephant, whatever. All right, now from there we have this. All right, so that starts with hitting the 12th fret on the high E string and then a whole step bend at the 17th fret on the B. And then do that again. And then hit the 12th on the high E again, but this time the bend on the 15th fret. So we... Then you play 12 on the B string. Then a bend at the 14th fret on the high E string. And then we take it, you can kind of roll down 12 on the high E to the B. And, and he's just doing kind of a bending up to the blues note there. On the, so the 14th fret kind of doing a half step bend on the G string. And then bring it back down. And then back to 12. All right, now from there, we're gonna kind of, uh, we got the last couple of licks of the solo. We have this. 
So that is the same lick that we did earlier. So you do it from a bend of the 15th fret there on the B. And then that same lick we did. So that's going to be pulling off from that 15 to 12 on the B, over to 15 on the G, back to the 12, and then pulling off 15 to 14 on the G. So it's a six note repeated uh, lick. And it kind of does it like three times, and it kind of you can kind of end it. The ending note is kind of weird. It doesn't really end it, but it kind of sounds good to kind of end it there. And then we have this last lick, which is really cool. All right, so that is going to be pulling off 12 to 11 on the B string, and then 14 to 12 to 11 on the G. over to um, 14 on the D. So that's kind of the, the first third of it. So we have this at first. So it's straight down at first from this B to this E. And then we have this. So that goes 11, 12 on the G. 14 on the D, back to 11 on the G, and then play 12, 14 on the D. And then you do the same thing basically starting on the D string. So it goes between the D and the A, that, so that same pattern. So all together. All right, and then we're back with that same chorus again at the end of the solo. Now, right here, when he did those uh, kind of triads that led us up the E, the A, and the B triads that led us into the, the solo, he does those again, but he goes into a series of fills instead. Well, I guess you can consider it a second solo. Uh, it looks like this. All right, so so it's kind of this um, the same thing. So off this, uh, so that's that hammer nine eleven on the D over to eleven nine on the G. Bend that up a, a couple times with the eleven on the G, and back down to nine. That's the first lick, and then we have this like that. So we had this. So that's a quick little bend and release of the 15 on the B string. Pull off to 12. Then over to 14 on the G. And then a bend at the 12th fret. So we have this. And then back to that 14, and then back to the bend on the G. So we have this. And then we have this. So that's a bend at the 19th fret on the high E. And then move up to the, the uh, 21st fret, and then Resolve it there at the uh, 17th fret there on the B string. All right, and then the last little lick. So we have this. So you're going to start out with a pre bend at the 12th fret. And it's kind of pre bend whole step. And release it down to the 12th. Over to 12 on the, I'm sorry, 14 on the D. Kind of a, to the 11th on the G. And 
kind of got kind of bend it, release there. Back to that 14 on B and a couple whammy bar. And we're going to end this section by playing the B power chord and the A power chord. And then there's that little a cappella thing with David Lee Roth. And then we have the ending, uh, which has another kind of uh, symmetrical, fast, uh, some, um, symmetrical lick uh, from Eddie. So it sounds like this. All right, so that's a uh, typical Eddie ending. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with this sliding in the seventh fret of the A, then five, then four, and then a trill between three and four. And then hit two real quick and kill it. So we have this. And then we're gonna go up here and play they're kind of really just based off of uh, dominant nine chords, but you don't—you only need really the top strings. So kind of the eighth fret on the high, th the top three strings, and then seven. Or you can play the full dominant nine chord, which is the seventh fret there on the uh, D and the eighth on the A, like that, and then or just the top strings. And then we have the symmetrical thing. So what he's doing here is he starts it. He finds his three notes in his pattern that he likes, which is five, seven, nine here. It's kind of a major two whole step pattern. So five, seven, nine. And then what he's going to do is he does this kind of, he's going to take it all the way down the strings, those same exact frets. And the, So you gotta find like kind of the, the pattern that he's using as he goes across. So the way I kind of what I like to do is kind of like that. So we had this pick seven, hammer on nine, pull back off, pull back, uh, hammer back on nine, and pull all off all the way down from seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, five over to nine on the B, and then back to that five. So that's kind of... So these kind of things, when Eddie does this, it's nothing that's really note for note. He takes a shape, and he takes like a series of like, uh, or cool like legato feel that he likes to do, like... And he takes it just across strings, and it sounds amazing because it's so fast. It's such a blur of notes, and it, it doesn't matter if every note's in the key. It just works because of the speed of it. Um, so it's a really cool thing. So do that. Those kind of patterns. Just let it rip. And he does more on the top. And then kind of one pattern on each string as he goes down. And when you get down to the, the, the A string, you go that 975, pull off. And then he just slides down to two, starts down to four, I'm sorry, then two. Slide up to 12, then 11, and seven, five. And then that kind of same, the second, dominant on nine chord we did at the seventh fret there to end it all right so it's a fun track it's got some amazing stuff in it our, our uh, some early eddie uh, it's always a good to start your day with that so i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you again soon from guitarlessons365.com